Great to have you with us. Dr. Emmanuel Akwete, Executive Director of Institute for Democratic Governance, IDEC, has expressed hope suspension of Suleiman al-Hassan for allegedly instructing the release of some NPP thugs from police custody could be the end of political vigilantism in the country. He was speaking on the AM show. It could be because if the police will be given a free hand to do their work and to do it professionally, um, you would know that there is a force, there's a state agency that enforces the law, and you are not above it because of your political link. So I, I think that it is a very important decision, the beginning of the end, because uh, it may well be that uh, others might not take this seriously, and they think they may be more influential or powerful, so the president will not act or something. But there is a certain feeling you get when you talk to the police and also to the political leaders, especially when they are in government. They are, they are above everything, including the state itself. So the president, I think, ought to be commended. And it is a fair process, I believe, he's laid out where he says, let's investigate to know the truth. Uh, if he acted in good faith and so on and so forth, fine, he will decide on reinstatement. But you cannot say that he hasn't done a good thing, at least demonstrating tolerance for uh, or intolerance for interference with police function. Mm. Could we have had somebody else do the punishment, if you like, come up with a statement apart from the president? Because, uh, and I'm asking this because this was largely reported by the media. And I'm thinking there are other incidents that the media may not necessarily get to report. Uh, and that could also be undermining the work of the police. So is there somebody who watches over these appointees apart from the president? Um, the police, yes, of course, there's a police council. There is the minister. Um, there, is, um, uh, there are these two institutions who could do that, uh, or leaders in those institutions. But I think it is also fairly within the remit of the president. You know, you said as a pleasure of the president means he can appoint you, there's a laid out procedure. But then the procedure is also laid out to say before you can, his hands are not tied. Before you can remove somebody, you have to go back to parliament, you have to talk to the police council, you have to. He's in charge. We are running a presidential system. Okay. So I think that the magnitude of the problem over the years uh, is such that you need the highest authority. And I think it's consistent with what the president said earlier. He would not tolerate vigilantism. He's asked the police to act. And the police is not acting. And we have found time to ask the police, why are you not acting? And sometimes what you pick up is, yes, the president spoke, but there are people, other people at other levels who really get in to stop what the police can do. And so it is, there's a political dimension. And that political dimension is appropriately addressed by the intervention of the president. Mm. Because he's speaking to his party. You know, he's speaking to his party that, look, let the state is state president let the state institutions do their work or i would act against you mm. the minister cannot act against other ministers you know and the police board or council cannot act against ministers they are not responsible to them they didn't appoint them regional minister is responsible to the president so i think that in every sense of the word we should commend the president and we should encourage that more of this happens because our institutions, mm. state institutions, must work. What is this vigilantism that goes into police stations, into court, and does everything they like, lawlessly? And we, say, we still say, oh, we are a rule of law country, and the political leaders are dancing around this board. We should not tolerate it. And mm. I commend the president for a decision well made. Finally, sir, let's get your take on this uh other uh, fallout of the suspension, if you like. Can a deputy regional minister act or, or you know, take the position of the regional minister as has been announced? In terms of acting, yes, anybody he, he can act because he's also gone through parliamentary, but he's deputy regional minister. And that means that if the minister, substantive minister is not there, he stands in. But if he's going to be the full minister replacing the deputy, the minister, substantively, then that is where you ask for procedure. Parliament probably would be involved because a new regional minister is being appointed. 
-hmm. On the other hand, there are those who would argue that he's already gone through the vetting process and he's worked with the minister. He has inside experience, he knows the job, and therefore the president could decide to say, look, continue, and so on. I, I, for me, this procedural thing, I think sometimes we engage, we double so much in procedural matters. It is the lawyers who have made us always think procedure. But what is the purpose? What is the cure? What is the problem that needs to be cured? Politically as well. And therefore, I think that it is fully within the remit of the president to appoint an acting person. If the deputy is not in, the regional minister is not in, the president probably would ask a coordinating director, a chief director with the regional person to stand in. It is state business now. It is not political appointment. It is who gets the state running. Mm. And therefore, I think that it's fully in order.